Hi guys, this video is about photosynthesis um, and basically just an overview of how it works and all that stuff. So here we go. Um, first of all, before we talk about photosynthesis, we're going to do a little discussion about light and um, just sort of an overview of that. If you take physics, it might sound really familiar. If you have not taken physics um, ever or like haven't talked about light since middle school, it might be a little bit of a bigger refresher. But basically, we're going to talk in this video about how light can have two forms, which is the waveform and then also like the particle form. Right now, we're going to talk about the wave version. So you probably know that light uh, occurs along a, my cat is really begging for attention, um, along a spectrum of visible light, which ranges in color from purple to red. And the, the color of the light is determined by the wavelength of um, the actual waves. So first of all, this distance between the peaks of the wave is the wavelength. Um, and the bigger the wavelength is, the lower the frequency, um, which is also like a measure of the energy of the light. Um, visible light ranges from about 380 to about 750 nanometers in wavelength. That's how it's measured. That's sort of the units. And then also, I'm sure that you are aware that light can be either absorbed, reflected, or transmitted. Um, and the colors that we see are because of the um, wavelengths that are being absorbed or reflected by specific objects. And we're gonna apply that to photosynthesis now. So if we come down here and we look at our little chloroplast, that's what this is, this whole um, object that's kind of outlined in this yellow color, is a chloroplast. Hopefully you remember chloroplasts have double membranes. Um, so that's why there's two lines, just like mitochondria. And then inside of the chloroplast are these structures called thylakoids. And thylakoids are the sort of like disc-like structures. They almost look like green quarters stacked on top of each other. So I'll label um, just like one thylakoid. And then a stack of thylakoids is called a granum, or several um, stacks of thylakoids are called grana. So that's what's labeled. Um, here, dexithylakoids. And then the fluid that surrounds the um, thylakoids is called the stroma. And we'll come to that in a few minutes, but that's a chloroplast. And then remember, of course, that like this chloroplast in this picture kind of looks like it's a cell, but it is not a cell, it's an organelle. So it's inside of a plant cell and not even inside every plant cell. It's only in the plant cells that actually will be doing photosynthesis, which are usually the leaves. Thylakoids contain um, pigments that give the plant its color and also allow for photosynthesis to happen. So chlorophyll A is the main pigment. So this is main pigment used for photosynthesis. I'm gonna abbreviate so it fits. Um, chlorophyll A is sort of like a blue-green color. Chlorophyll B is an accessory pigment. It's olive green. And then carotenoids are also accessory pigments. They are yellow and orange, like a carrot. Um, so the fact that there's multiple pigments that can be used for photosynthesis just increases the range of um, light that can be used for plants to do photosynthesis. Um, just a couple interesting things about this. So chlorophyll, actually chlorophyll A, breaks down when the temperature is too low. And so that's what happens in the fall and what's 
happening right now is that the chlorophyll breaks down and that sort of reveals the other pigments that were hidden by the chlorophyll because there was just so much chlorophyll that the other pigments didn't show through. Um, the reason that we see things that are specific colors is because that color of light is being reflected. So chlorophyll A, which is what we're really going to focus on, um, reflects green light. And so because of that, if you put a plant under a plain green light, it actually would not be able to use that for photosynthesis because all of that green light is reflected back out. So plants um, do really well with using red and like violet light for photosynthesis and cannot do it with just plain green, um, which is just kind of an interesting fact about them. Okay, so moving on from that, we're gonna talk about just sort of an overview for photosynthesis. Um, here's another chloroplast diagram that has a few more things labeled nicely for you. So you can see like this is a zoom in of the leaf and actually only like a specific part of the leaf called the mesophyll, um, which is sort of like the middle part. Um, and then you have these cells in here that contain the chloroplasts. And if you zoom into them, if you've looked at a plant cell under a microscope, you have probably seen this, that the chloroplasts are green. They're the only part of the cell that will actually be green. And they're because of that chlorophyll pigment that's inside the thylakoid. So here's just a nice little label diagram for you. Okay, photosynthesis as an overview is ants, which we know are autotrophs, converting light energy into chemical energy in the form of sugars that can be used for themselves or for heterotrophs that eat them. Um, so plants actually do cellular respiration, the glucose that they would use for cellular respiration to create a bunch of ATP um, would be glucose that they actually produced. So they kind of like make their own food and then they eat it and the eating it is cellular respiration, breaking it back down. All right, so the location that photosynthesis happens when we're thinking about plants, I'm not gonna focus on um, photosynthetic bacteria in this video except for like one tiny bit, but um, for the most part, the location is chloroplasts. And then if we're going to get really specific, which of course we are, that looks like a disease on that. Chloroplasts <laughs> doesn't look much better, but. Um, so specifically, photosynthesis happens in two steps, which we're going to look at over here in this diagram here in just a second. But. The first step happens in the thylakoids, which is um, the light dependent reaction. And the second step is called the Calvin cycle. And that, oops, I wanted to write the location first. So the second step is called the Calvin cycle, I'll put over here. And it happens in the stroma. So it's that fluid that is surrounding the thylakoids, almost like cytoplasm of the chloroplast if the chloroplast was a cell. So now let me come over here and show you this diagram. And I'm just, just gonna also do sort of like an overview of the two steps. Um, here before we delve into a little more detail like we did for cellular respiration. So this is a, obviously a very simplified image, but the light dependent reactions, which is sometimes I call the light reaction, um, uses light, which is, you know, makes sense. Um, so the light reaction consumes light energy. 
my gosh, what? What? Calm down. In the form of photons to excite electrons, which it's really called that exciting. Um, excite electrons in chlorophyll. Um, and then those electrons are passed through an electron transport chain. So we'll say electron transport chain generates two things, which are ATP and NADPH. So NADPH is just another um, coenzyme electron carrier that is similar to NADH from cellular respiration, but this one has a P. And usually I remember that as P for photosynthesis or P for plants, um, that it's the photosynthesis one if it has a P. Um, the light reaction also results in the photolysis, which is breaking using light um, of water. So I'll just go over here and say photolysis of water to form um, oxygen gas, which is then released from the plant. And then the products of the light reaction, the ATP and the NADPH, are used to run the second step, which is the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle can also be called the light independent reaction. Or um, the dark reaction. And that's just because it um, doesn't require light. So there you go. Um, the Kelvin cycle is responsible for using ATP and NADPH and carbon dioxide to modify simple carbon based molecules into sugars. Um, and the Calvin cycle is obviously a cycle because it is able to create the products it needs to restart both the entire reaction of photosynthesis, which would be ADP and NADP plus, um, but it's also able to produce like the actual sugar that it starts with at the very beginning. Um, so we will talk about that when we go into a little more detail about the cycle. Okay, so that's an overview of photosynthesis. And now we're gonna actually like dive into the deeper steps uh, one by one. So we're going to come down here. We're going to start with step one, which is the light dependent reaction or just the light reaction. So before we look at the whole thing, I'm going to zoom into this diagram. The light independent, I'm sorry, the light dependent reactions are done using two big complexes that are embedded in the membrane of the thylakoids. So if I'm going to like zoom into where this is happening, if this is my chloroplast and this is a thylakoid, this membrane is here. I'm going to actually fix that line a little bit better, but this membrane is this membrane. So this whole thing is the chloroplast. Um, and this is a thylakoid. So within the membrane of the thylakoids, there are these protein complexes that are called photosystems. There are two of them. 
photosystem one and photosystem two. And of course, because nothing is easy in biology, photosystem two happens before photosystem one. <laughs> and I don't know why, so who knows. Um, but basically what happens with these photosystems is that a photon or a particle, so this is like a particle version of light, um, strikes chlorophyll. And that literally causes the electrons in the chlorophyll to become excited, which means that they bump up to a higher energy orbital. Um, we're not going to like go into the depth of chemistry with that, but that's what happens. So because of that, the electrons start to be passed from chlorophyll to chlorophyll molecule until eventually they're accepted by this really special pair of chlorophyll A molecules. And they have two different names depending on the photosystem. I'll show you in a second. Those special pairs of chlorophyll then pass um, the electrons to a primary electron acceptor, which you don't have to know what it is. I don't even know what it is. Um, it's just a, a molecule with a high electron affinity. And that will trigger an electron transport chain. So just like cellular respiration, photosynthesis will have um, actually two electron transport chains, one for each photosynthesis. If you want to look at the like 3D protein view of this, these photosystems are made of um, proteins and chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll molecules are these like weird looking green guys um, sticking in the middle of the photosystem. Um, but it's just a giant protein. So there you go. Okay, so now let's talk about this in words. So the light reaction begins with the excitement of chlorophyll by photons, which we've already sort of established. Here's that. When this happens, the electron gets raised from its ground state, which is sort of like its resting state, into the excited state, which I said when I was describing it just means that it's moved to the orbital where there's more potential energy, a higher orbital. orbital. Occasionally, um, electrons can drop back down to the ground state and what that does is it will release releases um, heat or light which is called fluorescence just kind of an interesting fact but typically that doesn't happen um, and then what happens is the electron is passed eventually to P680 for photosystem two, which is this molecule right here, and I'm not used green, P680 or P700 if it is photosystem one. So let's talk first about photosystem two. Photosystem two is this protein complex in purple, um, here on the left, that is surrounded by light harvesting complexes um, and pigment molecules. The pigment molecules are the chlorophyll. What happens is light hits the photosystem and bounces, 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 eventually gets to P680. The energy of that is enough energy to split water. And when it splits water, it splits it into oxygen gas and hydrogen ions and electrons. So I'm going to say that this is the photolysis, which is splitting using light energy into O2, which is released from the plant, electrons, and hydrogen ions. And all of these things are going to be used. Um, in different ways. The oxygen's not going to be used, it's going to be released. The electrons are going to be passed to P680, which is that pair of fluorophyll molecules. Um, and then P680 is going to pass them to the primary acceptor, which is going to pass them down an electron transport chain. Same exact concept as cell respiration, where at the end, ATP synthase is there, um, generating tons of ATP from this whole concept of chemiosmosis, the hydrogen ions um, getting pumped into the stroma and then needing to like diffuse back in through ATP synthase. 
So what I'm going to say is that let me put it over here. So this electron transport chain, we need to different color, generates ATP using chemiosmosis of hydrogen ions. And it's the same concept where each of these complexes, PQ, cytochrome, and PC, are increasingly electronegative. So then what happens is this um, electron transport chain connects to photosystem one, which remember I told you that they go backwards. So at photosystem one, what happens is another photon strikes chlorophyll and restarts, or I'll say re-excites rather. electrons um, to sort of like reboot the process. And that this diagram right here, which I'll zoom into real quick, um, I think kind of helps illustrate that where the photons of light are kind of like the guys with the hammer and they're like shooting electrons at the higher energy state. And the ladders are just showing like energy increasing. So when the man like hits the photon, he's like light, bam, the electron shoots up and then sort of rolls down the electron transport chain. By the time it gets to the end of the first electron transport chain, the energy is pretty low. So another photon of light comes in and bam, re-energizes it, shoots it back up to a higher energy state, um, which is what was needed to start a second electron transport chain. So as a result of this second photon, what happens is a second electron transport chain. transport chain occurs. And this one, instead of having ATP synthase, has a different enzyme, which is NADP plus reductase, which is obviously going to be reducing NADP plus into NADPH. So this electron transport chain occurs um, ending with NADP plus um, reductase, reducing NADP I'll just say forms NADPH, which is the reduced form. And if you needed a refresher on um, that, Reduced means that it has new electrons. Um, oxidized means that it's lost electrons. Okay, so now what we've created from photosystems one and two are ATP using the first um, photosystem, which was photosystem two, and NADPH from photosystem one. And what that will eventually do is go to the Calvin cycle. So this ATP and this NADPH are used in Calvin cycle. The only other thing that was produced was oxygen from the splitting of water, and that will be released by the cell to the air for us. And those are the light dependent reactions. They depend on the photons of light to energize the electrons, to produce ATP, and to produce NADPH. Before I move on, I want to just mention bacteria that do photosynthesis um, because they do things a little bit differently. So there are two options. The first one is non cyclic electron flow, and that's what. Um, plants use. It's where there's both photosystems. 
The second one is cyclic electron flow, which is what um, bacteria will use if they're doing photosynthesis, and it is just only going to use photosystem one. And that's why photosystem one is photosystem one, because it's a more ancestral um, form of doing photosynthesis. Um, and photosystem two, even though it happens first in the reaction, is um, more of like a recent evolutionary development. So there you go. Um, cyclic electron flow is going to produce ATP, but it is not going to produce NADPH um, or oxygen. So it's going to use photosystem one just to produce ATP. And you do not have to know like the process of how it does that. But I just wanted to mention like a difference in prokaryotes and I'll like label this as um, prokaryotes. versus eukaryotes is in this bubble. Okay, moving on to the dark reactions. So now that we've talked about that, we've um, come to step two, which is the Calvin cycle. Um, and I do just want to show this picture that's all the way over here to the left before we move on any further. So here's just showing kind of like a image of what this looks like with the thylakoid. So you have that thylakoid membrane, um, which is where the photosystems and the electron transport chains hang out. Um, and then you have the thylakoid space, which is where those protons are going to be pumped into for the electron transport chain, and then they're going to diffuse through ATP synthase um, to produce that ATP, and eventually that ATP is going to the Calvin cycle. So products, again, are NADPH, ATP, and oxygen. And that's those are the light reactions. That's the summary of it visually. Okay, so now we've arrived here at the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle, or whatever you want to call it, dark reaction or light independent reaction, is going to happen in the stroma, which we've already sort of established. Um, and what it's going to do is use up that ATP and that NADPH. How it's going to do that is going to happen in three steps. The first step is called carbon fixation. What happens in carbon fixation is carbon dioxide that the plant absorbs from the atmosphere is added to a sugar that's called RUBP, which is an abbreviation for a word I don't even know. Um, RUBP is a five carbon sugar. This is a multi-step process, sort of like the Krebs cycle, but the main enzyme that um, handles it is called Rubisco. Called R, little u, big B, little i, little s, big C, little o, um, which is also an abbreviation for a longer name. Um, but you will always be able to just call it Rubisco. That's the first step. The second step, which is where like the magic really happens, is reduction. So obviously in reduction, things are going to be getting reduced. What happens is phosphates from ATP and electrons from NADPH. Um, are used to modify and reduce intermediate carbon based molecules. 
into sugar. And that sugar is called G3P. G3P eventually becomes glucose, or it could be built into other molecules. Um, but that's happening here in this section that's called phase two, um, that you can see the full name of G3P, um, super long, but it is the output of the Calvin cycle and the main, the main purpose of the Calvin cycle is to create G3P. Um, you can see here that the ATP is used and the NADPH is also um, G3P. Finally, the last step is called regeneration, which is what allows the cycle to like continue being a cycle. And what happens with that is the remaining carbon backbones are rearranged and phosphorylated. By more ATP to form RUBP again, and that restarts the cycle. So, because of that, you're able to go back up here. Um, these last two stages, so these two, generate the less energized forms of ATP and NADPH, which are ADP and NADP plus. Um, and these are returned to the light reaction so that the whole process can go again. So even though the Calvin cycle does not require light to happen, it still wouldn't be able to actually work without light for a very long amount of time because um, the ATP and the NADPH are completely instrumental for this process to happen. And they're only generated using the light uh, dependent reactions. So you have to have them. All right, just a super, super speedy summary here of the whole photosynthesis equation that you're super used to. So the summary is carbon dioxide plus light plus water produces glucose plus oxygen. So if I'm just going to outline sort of where these things are um, being used, the light and the water are used in the light dependent reaction. The oxygen is produced in the light dependent And then the carbon dioxide is used in the Calvin cycle. Basically modified and reduced. Um, and then the glucose is the output. So this is Calvin cycle. And there you have it. That is photosynthesis. All right. Good job, way to soak it up. Um, we will talk more about this in class. Have a great week.